not normal under Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton. Yeah. Uh, the fact is that if you listen to Hillary Clinton the other day, what she said to the American people was, as regards to ISIS, my strategy would be just about the same as the president. Just about the same as the president? We have people across this country who are scared to death. Because I can tell you this, as a former federal prosecutor, if a center for development is disabled, if San Bernardino, California, is now a target for terrorists, that means everywhere in America is a target for these terrorists. Now, I've spent seven years of my life in the immediate aftermath of September 11th doing this work, working with the Patriot Act, working with our law enforcement, working with the surveillance community to make sure that we keep America safe. What we need to do well, is restore those tools that have been taken away by the President and others. Restore those tools to the NSA and to our entire surveillance and law enforcement community. We need a president who's going to understand what actionable intelligence looks like and act on it. And we need a president and a cabinet who understands that the first and most important priority of the President of the United States is to protect the safety and security of America. As someone who has done it, I will make sure it gets done again. Thank you. One of the killers was San Bernardino with an American who was not on anyone's watch list. How are you going to find that radicalized person and stop another such attack? Well, first of all, well, I said last February that we needed to have people on the ground, troops on the ground, in a coalition similar to what we had in the first Gulf War. I remember when the Egyptian ambassador of the United States stood in the Rose Garden and pledged Arab commitment to uh, removing Saddam Hussein from Kuwait. Before we came out here tonight, I am told the Saudis have organized 34 countries who want to join in the battle against terrorism. First and foremost, we need to go and destroy ISIS. And we need to do this with our Arab friends and our friends in Europe. And when I see they have a climate conference over in Paris, they should have been talking about destroying ISIS because they are involved in virtually every country you destroy ISIS in a coalition, you get joint intelligence with our European friends, and then here at home, there are things called the Joint Terrorism Task Force, headed by the FBI, and made up of local law enforcement, including state police. They need the tools, and the tools involve encryption, where we cannot hear what they're even planning. And when we see red flags, a father, a mother, a neighbor who says we got a problem here, then we have to give law enforcement the ability to listen so they can disrupt these terrorist attacks before they occur. We can do this, but we got to get moving. Pay me now or pay me a lot more later. Your question is not accurate. I'm very proud to have joined with conservatives in both the Senate and the House to reform how we target bad guys. And, and what the USA Freedom Act did is it did two things. Number one, it ended the federal government's bulk collection of phone metadata of millions of law-abiding citizens. But number two, in the second half of it that is critical, it strengthened the tools of national security and law enforcement to go after terrorists. It gave us greater tools, and we are seeing those tools work right now in San Bernardino. And in particular, what it did is the prior program only covered a relatively narrow slice of phone calls. When you had a terrorist, you could only search a relatively narrow slice of numbers, primarily landlines. The USA Freedom Act expands that, so now we have cell phones, now we have internet phones, now we have the phones the terrorists are likely to use, and the focus of law enforcement is on targeting the bad guys. You know what the Obama administration keeps getting wrong? Is whenever anything bad happens, they focus on law-abiding citizens instead of focusing on the bad guys. We need to focus on radical Islamic terrorists, and we need to stop them before they carry out acts. Thank you, Senator Rubio. Senator Clinton, whole territory in the Middle East, as I outlined earlier, in multiple countries. This is not just the most capable, it is the most sophisticated terror threat we have ever faced. We are now at a time where we need more tools, not less tools. And that tool we lost, the metadata program, was a valuable tool that we no longer have at our disposal. Senator Cruz? Well, I, you know, I would note that Marco knows what he's saying is the truth. You know, Mark Levin wrote a column last week that said that the attack ads and super PAC is, is running are saying the same thing, that they are knowingly false and they, they are, in fact, a Linsky-like attack like Barack Obama. And the reason is simple. What he knows is that the old program covered 20 to 30 percent 
of phone numbers to search for terrorists. The new program covers nearly 100%. That gives us greater ability to stop acts of terrorism. And, and he knows that, that that's the case. Let me be very careful on answering this, because I don't think national television in front of 15 million people is the place to discuss classified information. So let me just be very clear. There is nothing that we are allowed to do under this bill that we could not do before. This bill did, however, take away a valuable tool that allows us, the National Security Agency and other law and other intelligence agencies, to quickly and rapidly access phone records and match them up with other phone records to see who terrorists have been calling. Because I promise you, the next time there is an attack on this country, the first thing people are going to want to know is why did we know about it and why did we stop it? And the answer better not be because we didn't have access to records or information that would have allowed us to identify these killers before the attack. They we are not any safer than the bulk collection of all Americans' records. In fact, I think we're less safe. We get so distracted by all of the information, we're not spending enough time getting specific immigration, specific information on terrorists. The other thing is, is the one thing that might have stopped Senator Bernardino, that might have stopped 9-11, would have been stricter controls on those who came here. And Marco has opposed at every point increased security, border security for those who come to our country. On his Gang of Eight bill, he would have liberalized immigration, but he did not. And he steadfastly opposed any new border security requirements for <laughs> refugees or students. Last week, I introduced another bill saying we need more security, we need more, more scrutiny. Once again, Marco opposed this. So Marco can't have it both ways. He thinks he wants to be this, oh, I'm great and strong on national defense, but he's the weakest of all the candidates on immigration. He is the one for an open border that is leaving us defenseless. But we want to defend the country. We have to defend against who are coming in. And Marco is, has more of an allegiance to Chuck Schumer and to the liberals than he does to conservative policy. <laughs>
You're in favor of moderate mosques and schools where there's anti-American sentiment. What do you consider anti-American? It's the first time I've spoken, and several people have had multiple questions, so please try to pay attention to that. Uh, now, as, as far as monitoring is concerned, what my point is, we need to make sure that any place, I don't care whether it's a mosque, a school, a supermarket, you know, a theater, it doesn't matter if there are a lot of people getting there, engaging and radicalizing activities, then we need to be persistent of it. We have to get rid of all this PC stuff. And, and people are worried about somebody going to say you're not Islamophobic or what have you. This is craziness because we are at war. That's why I asked Congress, go ahead and declare the war. We need to be on a war footing. We need to understand that our nation is in great danger. You know, what, uh, what the Muslim Brotherhood said in the explanatory uh, memorandum that was discovered during the Holy Land Foundation trial is that they will take advantage of our PC attitude to get us. And we have to be better than this. We have to be smarter than they are. Dr. Parson, who was right in that little debate we just heard between Senator Rubio and Senator Paul? Uh, I think you have to ask them about that. Uh, I, I, I don't want to get in between them. Let them fight. We'll, we'll <laughs>
bring the best and brightest, the most recent technology to the table, I was asked as a CEO. I complied happily, and they will as well, but they have not been asked. That's why it costs billions of dollars to build an Obama website to 